How's it going guys? Winter Kills here and welcome to episode 7 of the Duel Archives. Today we're going to be looking at our first ever WCQ match. Uh, here, this is the European WCQ from 2015, the Grand Final, so a pretty exciting match. Now, I have heard some things about this match, uh, particularly with how short it is, so... Uh, I'm very interested to see how it all plays out because I don't think I've seen this match before and if I have I do not recall how it played out, but uh, it is the European 2015 WCQ finals and uh, Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. I believe it is Necroz versus Chadal and we've got Jorg Mueller versus Ito Rafael Marcus uh, trying not to to butcher the names here as best I can but let's go ahead and uh, get into the action I don't even think I really need to speed this one up that much I'll put it to 1.25 and it looks like Ido is going to be first let's just pause to take a look at his opening hand Shadal fusion mathematician mind control a TT and a copy of mistake uh, mathematician plus Shadal fusion not terrible opening especially with the torrential in hand and the mistake like you really couldn't ask for better cards going against necroz uh, mistake alone might as well just wrap things up if he doesn't draw any spell or trap removal or an easy way to get to trish to banish it off the field which is easier said than done and yorg has got rota 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 book of moon valkyris my goodness um, and it looks like Mathman sent Squamata, sent Falco, sent Falco. And then he's going to set the Torrential. He's just going to set all of his back row. No, oh, and the reason he's doing this is so he can play around Trish, not leaving any cards in hand. So his opponent cannot Trish him whatsoever. He's going to activate one of three Rotas, and he's going to chain the mistake to it. Oh my goodness. So he now has two dead cards in his hand. All right, you know what? We may need to slow this one down. We may need to slow this one down. He's going to start by flipping up Falco. That's going to bring back the Squamata. He will chain Max C to that, which he is going to desperately need to try to draw into something to out this mistake. He'll take a little bit of damage, and he will pass turn. Um, still has two dead Rotas, and I need to... I, things are going so fast here. I got to pause. I know people don't like it when I pause a lot, but... He still has Valk, double Rota. He has Shurit and Manju. Um, so I'm assuming he's probably set the Manju. Uh, because I believe Manju... Well, I think he's probably set the Shurit here. Um, because I was saying, if it flips up, it can search. But it doesn't matter. He can't search anyways in this, this instance. So he sets one and passes. And uh, what will Ido do here? We know he has Mind Control. Maybe he'll try and go for a game here. I'm not entirely sure. It looks like he is going to go ahead and go through with the mind control. The set for Ido is definitely a bluff. We know it's Rhoda. He's going to get the information on what that set monster was. He's going to activate Shadal Fusion. Flipping it up there with some... Uh, oh! Oh my... Did he, did he really just like throw his opponent's card to the graveyard like that? The disrespect. Hold on. I need to see that again. He flips up. He's like, all right, it's a sure it. We're going to make a noise to this. <laughs> Just throws the card. He's like, sorry, I'll put it in your graveyard. The disrespect, man. Wow. Anno okay, this game's over. I see now. I see, what I see now what people said about this match. I see. Using away with the, uh, the, the, the sure it and... The Squamata, he's going to dump Beast. Beast is going to net him a draw. Like, I don't know how in the hell you're outing Mistake and Noitalis as Necroz player with having basically two tokens in his hand that don't do anything. He has two Rotas. Oh my god. And he has a set Book of Moon and Effect Veiler in hand. Yeah, this one's over. This is over. I, Yorg, you got a scoop. You got a scoop. Oh, he's got the book. Okay, he's going to book. He's going to book the Anointless. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. You have to book the Anointless, but even then, like, how are you outing the mistake? I don't know. Like, I really hope, like, I really hope for uh, Yorg's sake that he's maining. I use maining spell and trap removal 
I mean, if he was, it's one thing that's good, but like he's on a clock at that point with how many monsters he has on the field and the Book of Moon is only going to buy him so much time. That was an absolute smackdown. I would be on tilt if I was this man right now, 100%. Like, 100%. Um, let's just go ahead and get into game two here. Because, like, that was, a, that was a rough one. That was a rough one. I wonder what the commentators had to say about it. Shuffle, 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 pile, shuffle, pile, shuffle, pile, shuffle, pile, shuffle. Here we go. And also, I'll leave a link to the original video down in the description, as always, for you guys to check out, uh, so you can see it for yourself. Uh, so, Shadal getting to go first here. That's interesting that he would he would let him go first. I also find that interesting. You would think after the beatdown you received in Game 1, you would not want to try to play into Mistake again. But then again, I like I don't know. Am I crazy for thinking that? I feel like if you were Necroz, you'd go first, set up a good board with Unicor, and you also play around the Shadal fusion at that point. And if he, even if you can fusion, it's negated. Like I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy. He has Effect Veiler, Sinister Shadow Games. Uh, we know he has the Foolish, which is sending. I literally couldn't tell you what it is. Probably uh, it's Komata to dump the Falco. Same opener, looks like we saw in game one. He's like, yeah, let me shuffle this deck before you... Oh, my God. I was going to say before you sack me, but he already did. He already did. Thunder King Ryo set one. Yorg's got Rhoda, Royal Decree, Raigeki, Cycle, Kaleidoscope, Mirror. you got to be kidding me. This man is the most unlucky guy in the world. What is these opening hands? Raigeki, okay. What is the set card? I it's we know it okay, it's Shadow Games. We know it's Shadow Games. Yeah, Falco, Thunder King, Shadow Games. He's gonna chain the Shadow Games here. Because he can flip up. Well he can send. And then I think he can flip or flip face down. Yeah, so he's gonna flip up on a new chain here. Because I think it's all the effect of the card. And then he's going to get to bring back uh, the Squamata as a result. I'm not exactly sure what's happening here um, in the ordering of how that played out. Because it goes Shadow Games, Chainlink 2, Raigaki, Chainlink 1. He's got the set Falco. He's going to dump the Beast and then flip up the, uh, the Falco. And then... Would Falco, yeah, Falco would activate on a new chain then. Raigeki would destroy everything. And then Falco summons the set, set the Squamata. Okay. I had to make sense of that really quick. Because for a second I was like, what on earth is going on? But it all makes sense now. He has Artifact, Lancia, and Effect Failure. The funny thing is he will not need any of these hand traps. Do another Effect Failure. Or did he set Beast? Or no, he sent Beast off the Shadow Games. Duh, okay, that's how he drew. He sent the Beast off the Shadow Games. He has Royal Decree, which, uh, funny enough, is also not going to do anything here because he has loads of hand traps. Rhoda actually being live, but my, I can't believe the amount of terrible luck. And apparently all of these cards are Dark Monsters, which is also funny. A little bit of an error from the, uh, the graphics overlay. Uh, crew from the production team But it is what it is Like I don't even know what on earth you could do with this combination of cards Ragaki is not in hand anymore uh, Rhoda searching the shirt He could search clauseless, but he sure doesn't need any more mirrors at this point uh, So he has the set squamata He's gonna banish a light and a dark BLS is here it could not get any worse. It really, really could not get any worse right now. And he has the Squamata, so we can flip the Squamata up and poke for some damage with that. But it looks like he's just not even going to flip up the Squamata. He's just going to leave it there. Tack in for 3k. Put him on a clock now. Because next turn, we 3k plus 18 is 48, and then plus any normal summon. Okay, he draws Ice Hand. 
He's got to be happy to see the ice hand. But there's no spell and traps for him to pop. He's put in so much spell and trap hate. And it's funny because now he's not seeing any of the spells and traps that he saw in game one. We saw the mistake. He set four, even though a lot of them were kind of bluffs. Mainly just to play around Trish. Which I get because, you know, if you're going to try to play around Trish, it means you're setting a lot of cards. You can take advantage of ice hand. And, um, yeah. Kills the ice hand. Or, wait a second. How did he kill the ice hand? Well, I I don't think it totally mattered because or no, he flipped up the I'm I'm actually a bot. He flipped up the Skomata to pop the set. And then he ended up just going for game there anyways. I actually was just I just kind of blanked out for a minute. I was like, "Wait. How could he attack with a Falco if he already but he flipped up the Skomata, pop Going for the Falco, going for the 18, going for the 3K, which I don't think is game. No, it is game. It is game. It's just enough for game. Yeah, his hand was so terrible. He's like, you can, I, I, I hope he's like, oh man, like I, I hate to see that happen because like, what can you do with that hand, man? What can you do with that hand? Also, what in, what on earth was that fist bump in the background? That has got to be the quickest European. That is not even. That has got to be the quickest WCQ final ever. It has to be. Got sacked game one, and then just bricked to all hell game three or game two. Wow. Well. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. It's probably the quickest episode of the Dual Archives ever. If you want to see more of my content, click on one of the videos popping up on the bottom of the screen right now. We'll see you guys in the next one. And like always, a special thanks goes to our Divine Level channel members who go above and beyond to support this channel. And they are Cadillacs, 84, Pony Stark, and Keith Sidgers. Thank you guys so much for your extremely generous support.